Now let's deal with uh, an attitude, an ethos, which is meant to uh, help us deal with the modern world of mediocrity and where the masses, uh, quantity, overpowers quality, the few. Now some preliminary steps have been undertaken by some, that is they've woken up from their uh, Judeo-Christian uh, slumber and they've stopped associating themselves with the large group called humanity, finding their uh, an identification, most of the time with individuals that have nothing in common with. Some such as in the feminist and the uh, MRA movements are now uh, more selective. Their uh, sense of identity is more refined, yet doesn't go far enough. The feminists now see that there's a difference, and the MRAs, that there's a uh, difference between a subgroup within the term humanity, that is, between males and females. And up to recently, uh, this distinction has been prohibited. One cannot even speak of it or imply it, insinuate it without being accused of hate. Uh, a label, an uh, insulting label being cast against them, such as uh, sexist. But there's more. The more refined the mind becomes, the more its identity becomes more distinguished, distinct, discriminating, more refined. But this goes even beyond race. So race is another aspect of uh, consciousness of differentiation, of distinction. That is, as we can see in the the in the difference between male and females, uh, the psychological differences. <clears throat> we can also see similar differences between races, tribes, if you want to call them that, breeds. You see, a culture does not come out of the nothings. It is organic. What do I mean? I mean, a way of thinking springs out of a biology which is rooted in a historical context. A people living within a particular environment and facing particular challenges developed a particular mindset. And this becomes... Uh, an ideology, a way of looking upon the world. And this is not separate from uh, their genetics, their past. Because genetics is simply how the organism interacts with the environment and the outcome of this. So we see now the connection between memes and genes. That is, memes are direct uh, products of genes interacting with the environment. They take over where genes leave off. If we proceed with our line of thinking, then we will admit that there's differences between men and women. So the concept of humanity is too general to include everybody. And in fact, the simpler the mind is, the more it is taken over by this uh, simplification, generalization. Uh, in fact, the the fundamental characteristic of a more sophisticated mind is it's more refined uh, simplifications and generalizations because inevitably the mind must uh, make some but the more refined these generalizations are the more sophisticated they are the more sophisticated the mind is so the mind now having been released from the uh, the simplistic, almost childless generalization of humanity as it is proposed to it as a way of uh, controlling consciousness and populations uh, delves deeper, it becomes more discriminating, sees differences now between the sexes. But still, it is inhibited to go further, to see difference between, differences between the races see the connection between race and uh, biology <clears throat> or appearance and uh, and uh, psychology and uh, limitations 
and intelligence. That is, to admit that uh, the apparent is not only superficial, but is uh, it's an indication of a spirit, uh, and that evolution doesn't all, only work upon the physical form, but it also works upon the mind. It's uh, it establishes uh, limitations, characteristics, psychology, uh, attitudes there. But now we must go further. Even within the same race, there are going to be minds that are more, even more refined, more discriminating. That is, they will not associate themselves with all within their uh, particular racial group. They will not identify with uh, a national identity. They will not identify with a tribe or a religion. They will be more refined. This is what I call the, aristocrat the aristocracy of the mind. That is, its refinement to the point where its sense of self uh, makes it perceive more finer details in others. So now it is possible to find uh, more similarities between a man and a female, a male and a female, than there is between a male and another male. So a man can have more similarities, uh, intellectual uh, connections with a female than he can with a man. So to simply say that all men are of my kind is a gross uh, misunderstanding of biology. It's as if to say that all humans are of my kind. This too is a overgeneralization. Overgeneraliz So now we're entering into the realm of memetics, that is, connections, communities based on attitudes, on ways of thinking, on intellectual uh, prowess, on attitude, on a way of engaging the world, of seeing the world, of accepting the world, a uh, level of courage in this regard. Because accepting the world uh, involves courage. One cannot just, uh, that's why a lot of intelligent people fall into uh, faith or uh, into uh, humanism. Because though they have the capacity to perceive what they perceive, they cannot bear, cannot deal with. So they run to the uh, easiest comfort, the, uh, the comfort of unity with, within a, uh, a uniform state. I will use a metaphor to describe the, the form of aristocracy I'm talking about. It has nothing to do with wealth, money, privilege, uh, social status. It has to do with perception, uh, sensitivity to reality, a uh, way to endure it, to accept it. And I will use this metaphor that I've used many times before. The perception of uh, quality of wine. Some individuals can drink a wine, any wine, and they, except for some minor differences, cannot perceive uh, many details within it. Yet a more refined palate can perceive scents, uh, subtle tastes. He can connect them to regions of the world. His sense of uh, his sensual awareness is so uh, refined that he can do this. He can trace it back, that is to a, a historical uh, context, a, ge a geographical area. Here we see how the appearance, because appearance is not only uh, visual, it's also textual, it's uh, form, it's taste, it's smell, it's sound. You can see how appearance now can be traced back uh, simply by being perceptible, by being sensitive to the details. It's a matter of perceiving details and being able to assimilate these details within uh, uh, into uh, cohesive models to find uh, in the chaos of existence in the multiplicity patterns and to be able to formulate uh, understanding using these patterns so we're talking about a level of awareness which distinguishes one individual from another and this crosses uh, the genetic boundaries, that is, you can find individuals within 
all races and all sexes, yet this does not dismiss uh, genetics, uh, the genetics of uh, female, male, and about the genetics of uh, races. Why? Because sex and race, that is your bloodline, determines the potential you have. It establishes a potential. It determines a potential. So albeit uh, these sensitive aristocratic minds can be produced within any uh, uh, tribe and any sex can uh, have it, can be burdened with it or be gifted with it because it is both a gift and a burden. The potential is limited by the sex and by the bloodline. So now we see in this uh, increasing uniformity, this push to make everything level, to eradicate all natural distinctions, to eradicate all consciousness of it, to shame consciousness into uh, not-taking uh, into consideration any sensual uh, uh, any sensuality that uh, uh, at least in reference to the human being. Uh, we see a reaction to this that is as more uniformity is proposed, a segment of the population will display a more discriminating attitude. It will even refine its, uh, its perceptions. It will see more difference. It will focus on the difference rather than on the similarities. As it pertains to sex, this will result in a reluctance to fornicate with anything uh, below a certain quality just because it belongs to the opposite sex there will be a more uh, discriminating attitude towards with whom you interact you will choose to be alone rather to, than to have many friends that is I will go back to my model less is more you will choose less of quality rather than more of quantity and you will define yourself and identify yourself with that choice that is instead of being ashamed and embarrassed by your discriminating uh, tastes you will be proud of them you will base your sense of self upon them because identity in the end is about this discrimination of otherness from self we are in other words but we are not and by hating or pushing back certain uh, phenomena, certain otherness, we define who we are and who we choose to be. Because in the end, self is not a, uh, a static, it's not a being, it's a becoming, it's a process, an ongoing process. And the ideal which guides this process towards an object objective is what uh, identifies us as a person, as an individual, as a mind. We are what we eat, yes, but we are also what we fuck and who our friends are and who we choose to associate ourselves with and identify ourselves with.